All right, we're in Indianapolis, Indiana. We just wrapped up the Cup, cup Carts Northwest uh, Grand National. Uh, and we thought we would do a weekend wrap up video just to kind of make sure everybody knows uh, how things went, what happened, and, and um, you know, all that. So let's kick it off. We've got some pretty cool apparel here going on. Who are we promoting here? Oh, hey, it's Kyle. So, What's going Kyle, on? let's start with you. Uh, give us an update on sort of the numbers, like what happened this weekend, how the boys do, you know, practice on Friday, yeah. running Saturday, racing Sunday, all that, so. Yeah, so we, uh, <clears throat> we came out here on Friday, uh, or we got to the track Thursday night, and that was kind of our first opportunity to see the, see the track and see the facility. Um, I know that both boys watched a lot of video before coming here. Um, so they had a rough idea as to, you know, where we're going left, where we're going right. But uh, I think the thing that they both really underestimated was the amount of elevation, the amount of speed you carry at this track. Um, and that showed in practice on Friday, you know. Um, both boys hopped in and were really good right off the bat. Um, as far as not being too far off, you know, I mean, we were within about three or four seconds um, of the front runners who run out here all the time and these in their own carts and everything else. Yeah, and um, a huge track. I mean, lap yeah. times were well over a minute. Yeah, so. and I mean, for for instance, uh, the uh, data acquisition on the carts, the, the lowest speed at this track is almost 35 miles an hour, with the top being about 55. So there's very little, you know, braking. Um, it, it's so much about the draft here and about who you're working with. And, and I. I think that uh, both boys have always kind of ran smaller, tighter tracks, so it kind of played in. I want to say added a little bit of disadvantage to them, but they both did a really good job adapting. Um, I would say that by the afternoon on Friday, towards the last few sessions, I felt like we had we had the drivers and the equipment to, to be able to win. Um, I felt a little bit more solid about Jake, because uh, Gabe, Gabe was just, you know, we're just trying to find it kind of finding that little fine tune to get him comfortable. Um, he was fast, but he just wasn't exactly sitting the most comfortable in the car. So uh, we were really kind of focused on trying to get him comfortable. Um, Jake was looking awesome. We sent him out for his last session and uh, unfortunately right away got uh, kind of a victim of circumstance, got tangled up in somebody else's crash and uh, his car took the brunt of the impact and uh, we bent the right front up about two inches, uh, bent the spindle, um, as well as destroyed the rear end of the cart, um, bent the rear frame rails, uh, bent the rear bumper. Uh, thankfully, was, Jake yeah, was, was okay. There was another chassis that got uh, destroyed in that too. They actually yes. replaced the chassis, but we didn't have any other chassis, so we went to work to straighten it. Yeah, and I mean, I thought, initially when Jake first got hurt, I thought we were done for the weekend. Um, and uh, just a testament to either how stubborn Jake is or his work ethic. Uh, Within 10 minutes of this crash, he looks at me and says, can you call somebody and find another cart so I can race the rest of the weekend? So um, he did really good with that. Um, you know, Jake and Gabe both did a really good job kind of supporting each other Friday night, uh, especially through circumstances. You know, uh, Gabe was really wrenching and doing everything he could to help his brother get back on track. And I thought that was super cool. Um, and then we rolled into um, qualifying on Saturday and it was really weird for us because like back back home qualifying is is it just sets you up for one heat uh, qualifying here it sets you up for three heats and uh, and so even if you know say you start 10th in the first heat and you end up winning that heat you still start 10th in the second heat um, which we've never ever put emphasis on qualifying out in the Northwest because you know it doesn't matter it only sets you up for one heat I mean it's no different than uh, anything else we've done so um, so we didn't take that as serious as I think we should have. Um, Jake ended up qualifying 21st and uh, Gabe, I think was 15th? 14th, sorry, my bad. Um, and how big were the classes? Uh, Gabe had 49 in his class and I think you had 32? 34. 34. Um, and I mean, just for reference, I mean, the top 10, top 15 in both classes are all within half second. So there was so much emphasis on qualifying and we didn't, we somehow overlooked that and it really caught us off guard. Yeah, um, and they didn't have much track time either. So, I mean, it wasn't, yeah. you know, it's time reps in the cart so that DJ could get the chassis set up right. I mean, it was just, everything was stacked against them, you know? Right. Well, and it, this is one of those things where 
it's really hard to show up to a big race like that. Like I'm, I'm not a person that likes to make any big changes going into a race. But unfortunately, here, the only thing that was familiar with these two were the engines. You know, the 206 engines. They're on brand new chassis that they've never driven. Um, and not only that, I mean, the chassis out here are completely different than back home as far as you know, two different theories on how to make the optimal 206 car. So um, out here, the chassis are much more narrower. Um, and just completely different design. Um, they respond to changes a lot differently than our cars back home, so we had to rely a lot on DJ Keener to, as far as chassis setup goes. Um, a tire that we've never ever ran, uh, a Vega tire that was actually really fun to race on, but uh, we didn't uh, we didn't have any data on it. So um, hindsight being 2020, it would have been nice to get some time on that before we came here. Um, and then a track these two have never driven, and a really technical track at that. Um, I think that considering the circumstances, they did amazing, um, and that showed when we moved into the heat racing. Um, All right, so we're like six minutes in, so let's do a quick review of what the numbers were. Where did they qualify Saturday, how they how they start on the final on Sunday and stuff, So and how they finish? Um, do, you, do you want to share your numbers since you got a better grasp on that? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> so I qualified... Four, yeah, 14, and then finished the first heat race. Just, just run through. Where did you, okay. you start the pre-final on Sunday? Qualified 14th. Where did you start the pre-final? Uh, I started the pre-final 15th. And, and then, then where did you finish? In the pre-final? No, in the final. Uh, like 18th. Okay. We'll talk about more about how we could have done better. Well, where did you qualify? I qualified 21st, and then the pre-final, I was 16th. And in the final, I started not. I drove my way from 16th to 9th in the pre-final. And then in the final, I drove from 9th to 7th. Awesome. Good job. Okay, so let's talk about what could have gotten us better results overall. So Carla Kyle, Kyle talked about uh, qualifying and the critical nature of qualifying. And we know that now going in. Uh, you know, for example, Jake, you know, you passed the cart every single lap during qualifying. Qualifying was only six minutes. Track you didn't know very well. So what could we have done better aside? We know we needed to qualify better, but what could, what else could we have done better over the weekend? Jake, why don't we start with you? What could have got you up above seventh for the final? Uh, my, well, my car came up in the little late. But I don't know whether that really matters, but yeah. It would have helped if it would have came in earlier so that I had a better shot at it. So basically, just more time with that particular chassis, trying to understand the dynamics and stuff of that cart would have really helped you? Yeah. yeah, more laps, you know, more laps on the track. <coughs> what about the tire? How did you like the tire? I liked it a lot more than the LaCance. Uh, cool. <laughs> All right, Gabe, what could you, or what could have done, gone better? Not necessarily what could you have done better, but what could have gone better overall for the weekend to get you a better finish than 18th out of 20, or 18th out of 47 or 49? Well, first off, not having people run into the back of me and dive bomb me every single heat from like two cars back and use me as a break. And you think that had to do with maybe because you just weren't known? People didn't know who you were? Yeah. It was kind of like me against 48 other people because I wasn't from the East Coast. And, well, except for David Vasquez, he's cool. We worked together when we were around each other, but. As well as your teammate, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. Really good job yeah. With you. yeah. yeah. And, and then, uh, yeah, and you're also, you tend to be really nice. You, know, I was, you give people space. And I wasn't so as aggressive as I could have been, like, the first few laps of the heat races. So I ended up 11th, 23rd, and I think 17th. And then in the main, or the pre-final, it went fairly, it was fairly uneventful. And then I ended up starting the main... I finished the pre-final 12th and ended up starting the main 14th because the <laughs> divisional points for two drivers who had raced the series like got to jump into the top 10 for some reason. And so then I got ran into on the start going into turn two and ended up coming out of turn three in 46th and had 15, 15 laps. It was 16 total laps. Yeah. Yeah. 16 laps to get back to somewhere up front. So I ended up getting back to 18th. Yeah, but that was pretty amazing. It was, 
it was disappointing by for sure to see you know the first lap or second turn you get punted um you know you could have had so you could have had a top 10 easily if not more and, and i believe based on the times by the end of it i was running within three tenths of or six tenths of liters in there yeah, like and you were in traffic. Yeah, you were. In, yeah, you were in traffic, passing people. I mean, your lap times were comparable with the top three. And if we would have had better qualifying overall, you would have been there. So I think that's good reference for people from the Northwest or whatever who want to maybe come out here with us sometime. Uh, speaking of that, what do you guys think? Do you want to? Do you think you want to come out again next year? I yeah. think we're thinking about getting a group to come out next year and maybe run with us. If anybody would like our, to do that. Bring our hauler out with a bunch of other people's chassis in it. And yeah. Everybody can fly out and race. And yeah, I think, I think now that we've done it, we've kind of got the resources and everything aligned to be able to uh, really make it worthwhile if we want to get a bunch of people from the Northwest to come out here and uh, partake in this. I definitely think it would be a great experience for anybody who want, wants to do it, um, especially with Indy being such a cool racing town and everything oh, yeah, else. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I think doing there's today? a lot to do. We're going to... Today's Monday, going we're flying to back tonight. But yeah, we're gonna go to the Speedway today and go to the museum, check out. So Gabe, what do you think, how do you think uh, CKNA, Cup Carts North America did? Did you like their format, leadership, the way they ran the race? How do you feel like they did? I liked, there wasn't anything that I didn't like. I think, uh, excuse, excuse me. Um, they could have ran practice, like a few more practice sessions on Friday. And on Saturday we had a, a warm up, and then we had qualifying, and then the heat races, which I liked. I think that was enough, especially for somebody who's raced at that track before, but we hadn't, so it was kind yeah. of just a shot in the dark. But it might be it might be cool if they opened up a Thursday practice for people who travel in, so locals or people who come within, or maybe anybody who's ever raced in there before, you know, as far as their series, you know, can't do practice, but the people who are traveling in could, just to give everybody a chance to get a few laps and, you know, start to figure out what the gearing is and, yeah. you know, just all that sort of stuff. So, um, so Jake, what did you think about working with Coach Keenan as a driver coach? I think it was really helpful being able to <clears throat> look at data every time I came off the track to like exam where compare me and Gabe to see where we were faster or when where I was faster where he was slower and where we could like mix our skills in each part of the track so that we could become faster. Yeah. Do you think the mental game is important in racing? Yeah, I think it's really important. You got to like keep your head in the game even if you same thing happens to Gabe if you get driven off the track. He stayed really focused and didn't get really mad at himself and just give up. He really stayed focused and drove all the way back up there. Yeah, and just even for you, there were circumstances on the race where you passed somebody and then you had maybe six or eight cart lengths you had to make up just to get to the next cart. And, and what's it like in your head? And does it help to have a coach during those times? Yeah, yeah, it's helpful because you know that he'll be really proud of you, and you have, you, like, you have something to like. So he has something to good to say if you can do that, which is really nice to know. Yeah, that's cool. Gabe, same question for you. What do you think about working with, with uh, Kyle Keenan? Well, I mean, I wouldn't do it again. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just joking. No. Uh, it was really helpful, I thought, coming like off the track and even just like hanging out with him, it was cool because it was like, it was like I had a big brother here who was like, he would push me to do better, but at the same time, even if I screwed up, like in the, in the second heat race when I finished like 20, 30, he came up and was like, good job, I'm like, what are you talking about? I did absolutely horrible. He's like, it's all right, we'll get it back, and then sure enough like pre-final i set like third quickest time out of everybody yeah, that's cool. it was really helpful to, or it was nice to have someone who was like pushing me and telling me you can do it and keeping me going and keeping my head up yeah that's good so tell me real quick what did you think about the newcastle motorsports park facility it's really track. nice it's it has garages a lot like sema but like they it's, they have like three or four times as many crashes yeah. as SEMA and the, it has, it's super cool because they have a building and inside the building they have this huge cafe like the size of this room. It's just massive. It's like probably a thousand, two thousand square feet 
at, and then, at least five or six thousand. Yeah, it's well, trash. no, I mean like just the cafe area. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they have like arcade games where he whooped my butt multiple times. Well, like every time it's up one. But, um, two. I beat you. So twice. what about the track surface, the the look of the place? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was. I like. I think they might need to recurve a couple of the spots because like if you hit it wrong you'll like bend the spindle arm which I think I might have done in the main but I'm not sure but the elevation is really fun I've never like driven that track yeah it's like Pat's Acres it's a lot like Pat's Acres except with a little bit more grip I think yeah. I just I think it's a really good facility for drivers of all skill levels I think anybody could really benefit from running there um because there's spots in it that are very technical. There's spots in it that are very high speed. Um, spots in it that you don't necessarily take a traditional line because the corner's coming up. I just, I think that like, as a driver coach, that's the kind of track that I would really like to coach at because there's so much elements to being put yeah. there. And uh, and the facility overall is, is honestly super amazing. And I think it's a really cool place. And yeah, I, I hope that, that, that we can get more people from the Northwest to come out and run. Very well designed track, I thought, you know, just by looking at it and uh, really cool. I wish they'd put a deck off of that one building that had the second story so we could go outside and feel it. Yeah. I like to be in elevated, but I also, I like being outside where I can hear the engines and I can, you know, I can really feel it and be a part of it. So Jake, we got to drive uh, Keener carts this weekend, so and DJ Keener was there tuning for us. So, what'd you think of DJ? What'd you think of the Keener carts? I loved them. They were really fast. They really didn't take a lot of input on the steering wheel to turn. We've had a couple problems with it being loose or tight or pushing or hopping, but we fixed it every time we had a problem with it, which was really nice. And DJ was really helpful to have because he knows those carts like nobody else. Yeah, uh, that's pretty amazing too. Yeah. And uh, so he really helped us uh, get those carts set up so that we could run for a seventh position thing or first or whatever. Yeah, that's cool. Gabe, what would you think of DJ and the Keener carts? I like DJ. He's super nice and he is really, really good at setup. I don't, I don't actually know someone who's as good at setup and like changing and thinking and getting the carts to where they need to be as good as he is. But. I think part of the problem we had this week was we were chasing tight and then we would chase loose and tight and then it would get tighter and then we chase loose and then we would just we there was in the pre-final we found that perfect medium but we we couldn't keep it there because the track the thing about Newcastle is like the weather and everything in the track changes so much so fast you can't like it's really hard to keep up on it and I don't know if I'm good enough at telling him him like what the cart needs to do yeah it was amazing to see like the cloud cover came over the entire track conditions change you know you guys you could go out with the same and and so if you're if you're setting up for what was happening in the previous round then you're off because the clouds just came over and it changed the whole track you know and it's such a big track so kyle uh what questions do you have for the boys here before we wrap up um See, I got a couple of quick questions. Uh, first, I want to comment on on DJ Keener. Um, DJ, thank you so much for uh, you know working with the boys and really having a really good understanding of all the setups and stuff like that. Um, I think that both of you two should really uh, pat each other on the back for. I mean, you guys shown up and run different different carts, different tires, and everything else, and you showed up at a national championship event, and both. I mean, drove your butts off. At one point, we're both top three with lap times and everything else. Um, he went out in the morning warm up and was running with the guys who um, ended up winning the race. So um, I think that both of you guys have nothing to be upset about. I think you guys have both worked really hard this weekend and given everything that you guys were given, really made the most of your opportunity. Just one, one comment I want to add to that too is I, I thought about it quite a few times and other than the wreck on Friday night, which really was not at all Jake's fault. It was something that somebody did and, and it just happened, but they finished every single practice. They finished every single heat, pre-final and final, they finished running. You know, they didn't loop the carts, they stayed on track, they were very disciplined, they didn't cause any accidents. Yeah. You know, it was it was nice it was nice to see that watching them race knowing they weren't gonna be one of the ones that does something stupid and drives himself or somebody else off the track and, and I think, you know, they could have gotten much worse results had we had right. they not had the 
the personal discipline and driving experience to get you know get where they were so. yeah and I think that uh, and, and I mean like that I I agree I mean they didn't cause any accidents they stayed out of trouble for the most part I mean with the exception of being you know, unfortunately when you've got 50 yeah. carts out there you know there's gonna be some bumping and banging but uh, I think that they they both did it amazing with everything that they were handled I thought that they started working together really well towards the end of the weekend as far as um, really helping you know each other stay positive, stay motivated, um, really keeping the head in the game and stuff like that, which I thought was super cool. Um, but, okay, so last weekend we were racing in Tri-Cities, right? Now we raced in here. Now we go back to Tri-Cities. Is there anything that you guys learned here that you guys are going to be able to take back to Tri-Cities? Experience. How so? Experience with what exactly? Well, it's a lot different on the East Coast, like driving wise. Like the drivers are a lot rougher out here. I I think I got punted to pass like ten or seven times, and I think to bring that back, but not like know what not to do, just to like like all all the Northwest drivers are always really clean and all always really clean, but. I think it helps to also know that like we're the Northwest is the best of the best. Yeah, the talent level in the Northwest is really good for sure, um, and especially we're very fortunate out there to have very clean drivers, in my opinion. Um, Gabe, what uh, what did you learn this weekend that we're going to take to next weekend? And I mean, hopefully you're not going to beat me, but I mean we can work on that. So um, I think I'll. What I'm probably going to take back that will be most helpful is just being aggressive like on the starts and being aggressive in the first few laps and just being more aggressive overall because in a class when you have like 49 drivers you have to be you have to take everything that you can get and be really selfish on the start and I found a way to do that and still be clean and there's a couple passing techniques that I found that I had never used before that I really like and really really fast. So I think definitely need to use those. See if I can finally beat Kellen. Oh yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, was, <laughs> you gotta beat me cool, first. Uh, oh, this okay. weekend, as far as Northwest stuff goes, I mean, it was cool to meet a lot of the national uh, folks and manufacturers and different things, but I was talking to the president of Briggs & Stratton. This is really funny. And, and, you know, I introduced him, and he said, oh, your son is Gabe Sessler. And I said, yeah. And, and uh, he's like, oh, yeah, well, I, we watch him and uh, Derek Wang from the Northwest because they're the ones who post the most, like, uh, the little videos, on, you know, what right. are the, the GoPro videos. So if you guys at home or wherever don't think it's important to GoPro your races and post them, uh, you know, that's how you... That's part of how you build a national reputation is by posting your race videos. And, yeah. And, uh, so, and I think um, it was super cool. And especially these boys, I think, saw it, you know, with this being like their first out of town race. But, you know, you show up to a big race like this and seeing how all these people who might be your rivals, your enemies back home, all of a sudden are your biggest fans, yeah, you know. Yeah. And it was so cool for for me and I know for these two both because I'd be like oh so and so says good luck and they're like really so and so never even talks to me back home so <laughs> I think it was cool to uh to for them to see the support you know I mean I've been fortunate to you know race and do some things and experience that previously but I know that um, it means the world when you feel like you you know you're not just representing yourself and your team but you're also representing you know your home tracks and everything else to yeah. them too so I thought these two um, did an amazing job with with just taking everything in stride and really having a good attitude. And then also, I mean, obviously with the minion heads and stuff like that, you know, they really uh, they really did a good job keeping the racing fun, right? Because the racing is all about having fun at the end of the day. They, uh, I saw a lot of families and stuff who didn't even look like they were having any fun. And, and for me, I just I, I see that all as, as a sad thing. You know, I think it's really important to just have yeah. fun. And, and we see that at home too. You know, there's a lot of people yeah. who just take the they take the whole experience way too serious. They're upset because uh, you know. Uh, you know, at, at TC Casey last week, I heard a dad getting on their little this little kid because he came off the scales and accidentally rolled the right tires in the dirt. Yeah. And the tires were hot. It's like, 
chill, dude. It's, yeah. This is supposed to be fun, you know? Exactly. And so the boys did a good job of that. They wore their minion hats up to the grid. Oh, gross. And, uh, and that was really funny. So, um, anyway, so let's wrap it up. We're at 25 minutes, but hopefully everybody appreciates the, the wrap up and hopefully uh, we'll get a bigger group to come out with us next year and um, look forward to coming back home and racing with everybody. So, thank you, Kyle. Yeah, no worries, man. Oh. <laughs> no. Ew. Okay, you're <laughs> gross. Stop.